So this is the first Sunday of the Lenten journey, and traditionally in churches we use the scripture text of Jesus going into the wilderness, and we've had some great examples of temptation today, and it's actually found in three different places. It's what they call a synoptic gospel, so that means that Luke picked up a little bit on it, Mark picks up on it, Matthew picks up on it. Three different tellings of the same story. Well, uh, this has also been captured in film as well, and uh, today we have uh, one scary video to share with you uh, that might give us a little feel of this temptation. So let's take a look at this video instead of me reading the scripture text. Nice. Well, it's one example, right? It's one example of what can happen to us if we step out of our ordinary lives and into a place where we are feeling a little bit uncomfortable. Jesus encounters kind of this dark energy, this Satan energy. And that's, in a way, how we're encouraged to start Lent ourselves. Step into a wilderness, meet up with some pretty freaky guys, and see how you handle it. What if we did that a little differently here? at the garden, as we so often do. Now, Lent, indeed, is about penitence, which means that you look at your actions and you determine which ones were not so good and you ask for forgiveness. It's about sacrifice, giving something up. It's about contemplation. ...of our relationship with God, things where we find comfort instead of comfort in God. In a world that's moving faster than ever, where technology and answers, you can find them right away, where you can be fed right away in fast food, where you can move right along in life, these are a little bit counterculture. So no wonder 20, only 25% of the Christian population participate in Lent. But what if we were to reframe it? We talked about this a little bit on Wednesday at the Ash Wednesday service. What if we were to reframe fashioned an earth creature out of the dust of the earth and blew into its nostrils the breath of life and the earth creature became a living being. That's pretty powerful, right? That's really powerful. That's a different uh, creation story. There are a couple of them, and this is the one I really like, where God just takes the dust of the earth, blows it into this creature, and this creature takes on life. And guess what? That first breath is a breath that has continued on throughout all of time, has existed in But we, at this moment, in this time, in this place, have been given this breath. So what are we going to do about it? How is the breath that we share in going to transform not only our own lives, but this world in some way where our breath made a difference to bring love into the world? That is the miracle of the season. And the truth is, yes, we are tempted by a variety of different things, but the true miracle of the season is not that we're going to die, but instead that we have life. During this Lent, we 
about our relationship with God. And if you are interested in knowing more about that, come to the study today. But the wilderness experience is a reminder to us that there are so many things that can get in the way. But all we really need is deep within us. The psalmist puts it this way. The psalmist says, Indeed, you delight in the truth deep within me. God delights in the truth that's been put deep within you. And you would have me know the wisdom deep within. The true answers and guidance that we need for life one who loves me most, with the one who has the best plan for my life, if I take seriously these next 40 some odd days. See, oftentimes what has happened is we live our life in such a way that God's direction for our life is just far too unfamiliar. And we don't know how to deal with it. And it doesn't even feel natural. But indeed, the only way to live is listening for the voice within, the voice of God. Uh, I talked about it last week, The Second Mountain by David Brooks. He puts it this way. He says, a lot is gained by simply looking feel your way towards a new way of being. And there are huge benefits in leaving the center of things and going off into the margins to again listen to that still small voice. Henry Nouwen puts this this way about making your way out of life and stepping into a time of self-reflection. He says, you see that you are called to go toward solitude, prayer, hiddenness, and great simplicity, which is really what this season is all about. You see that for a time being, you papers and exciting books no longer scares you. That's what you find in this place where you can be present with yourself. It is clear that something in you is dying and something in you is dying to be born. But in order to do that, we must remain attentive, calm, and obedient to God's best intention for us. We live in a world today where we're bombarded by all kinds of options and inputs. And most of us are not finding satisfaction in life. How many of us have ever gone to... And before you know it, you have a cart full of junk food. And by the time you get home, you realize you have purchased nothing that would create a nutritious meal. This is my confession of sorts. And in the end, you eat all that junk and you're never really filled. You're never really filled. That's kind of how this world works today. We are so driven by distraction, by whatever is right in front of us. We forget that the greatest direction in life does not come through Siri, Google, or Amazon. Right here, and the loudest voice. The loudest voice. And most often that loudest voice is not the voice of God. That loudest voice most often studies show is the family that surrounds you and depends upon you, the boss who relies upon you. That voice is often how we are shaped by the fashion or the trends of this world. All of these things coming from the outside into us. And what Lent reminds us to do is that these are not the that you have that reminds you you did good work in your life that is all fading the true guidance we need for life is from within all these elements that make us humans doings often leaves us from that spiritual place of being that place where we truly can listen to the voice of God 
This week has created an environment, hasn't it, where we have once again been reminded about how we do indeed need to be listening to the voice of God. allows us the opportunity to step out of what we thought was so good and step to an, into a time and place where we can listen for God's still small voice. Where we have that place where we can stop trying to figure it all out, take the cotton out of our ears, put the cotton into our mouths, and just simply listen. Not to the voices coming at you, not to the world around you, but to the voice within you that is the voice of God. It's in the wilderness that we discover that it is important to listen to our lives. And that's where we experience this thing called us to listen, we will see how often we take off on the journey thinking we have the best ideas and the truth about life is it's not out there. It's in the patience of sitting with uncertainty that we hear the voice of God. So not only are we called to listen, to be patient, but we're also called to have a willingness to live into the questions, to sit in the questions. Have you ever noticed that oftentimes the people that provide the best guidance for our lives are not the ones who are providing? And then they ask a bunch of more questions. It's that kind of energy that puts us in touch with the divine. Not the questions coming at us, from, but the answers coming at us, but the answers coming from within that deep truth. Again, in that book, The Second Mountain, which clearly I love, uh, David Brooks writes about this wilderness. He says, on the surface, our lives, um, for most of us, we build a hard shell. It's built to cover the fear and insecurity. It's built so that we can get success and approval from this world. That you really are able to figure out what you yearn for, what you care about, and what you can connect with. You could call this deep core of yourself where your soul and your heart not only reside, but lead. In this wilderness experience, we find what they many call living deeply. And, and we do it periodically. Periodically you do it. I think living deeply involves that emotion that you never saw coming and that you never really you don't know why you're crying. Perhaps for you it was when you were holding the child that you just gave birth to. Or the Grand Canyon for the first time. It's listening to a piece of music that simply brings you to tears and you have no idea why. That's soulful living. We went to England a couple weeks ago for Andrew's birthday. I'm a GG for the first time, Grand Indy. We've got three of those little babies. Well, they're six, three, and uh, 11 months. And we rented this big house with just bedrooms and a dining room and a kitchen. And if you want to get to know your stepkids, that's the way to do it, let me tell you, and your grandkids. One morning, I was up early drinking my coffee, reading my book. sit next to Gigi to cross her legs like Gigi and to sit down and read that book like she was reading the New York Times. It was profound. And then she would periodically drink her apple juice like it was Starbucks or something. She just totally and completely enmeshed herself 
in that book. And that, my friends, was this holy moment for me where I got all weepy. And remember, I don't have kids. It was a freaky thing. I suddenly was so in love with this little being, and I suddenly had a And it only happened when I stepped out of the ordinary and into the extraordinary, when I stepped into a place with three stepkids and their kids, and I had a willingness to take that chance to try to get to know one another a little bit better. It was profound. It was profound because it was uncertain. It was profound because it was love-based for all of us. That's what it means to live deeply. And you can find that. Something tells me that if you watch Dave Bradley on Facebook, Dave Bradley is like insane for the... More. And there are people everywhere meeting with him. And you see this energy, like these people running through this dirt. And they're so excited about running through the dirt, you know it has to be a holy moment because people just don't choose to do this. <laughs> That's soul for living. That's stepping out of the ordinary. Dave is stepped out of the ordinary and into something new. And this most often happens at a time in our lives when we don't think we should be doing this. It most often happens when you think you have the best plan for your life. It's not Siri, Alexa, it's not getting an answer immediately. It's sitting, it's listening, it's experiencing this thing called patience in uncertainty. And it's recognizing that the wisdom you need for living is not coming at you, but coming from within. That, my friends, is soulful living. That, my friends, is the place where you learn how to listen to your heart and let your heart lead you on this journey in profound and miraculous ways. Simply listening to our hearts. Today, I'm and listen not only to the song, but go within as well. And then I want you to consider communion today as an opportunity for you to engage in the food that you need for this amazing Lenten adventure. Jesus said if you eat this little tiny piece of bread and you drink this cup, which we're going to talk about in a minute, don't worry, uh, that you'll never hunger or thirst again. That logically makes no sense at all. But it's about heart living, and it's about living from within and letting that be your guide. We're going to listen to our hearts, we're going to share in Holy Communion, and we're going to step out on this Lenten journey with a great energy that comes from God alone.